then moving on to the third big conversation point and this is a very very concerning study or the findings of these this study are extremely concerning a study conducted by the national family health survey has revealed that in some states in our country they have shown an increase in malnutrition and obesity amongst our children so rather than actually year on year showing an improvement when it comes to malnutrition and obesity we are actually showing a downward trend in certain states and this is an extremely concerning data point that's emerged some of the other highlights include that the data from the 17 states shows that how the share of stunted children has gone up the share of underfed underweight children has actually gone up in fact if i had to tell you the share of stunted children has actually increased in 13 states in our country there are high number of children with low weight to their height ratio in about 12 states that's also a concern as per their height they're underweight and that share has gone up share of underweight children has actually gone up in 16 states share of overweight children has also increased in 20 states effectively we are looking at many states in our country today where the dietary plan for our children is completely all right we are just not taking care of our children of the future of our country and we are just not feeding them right and we're going to actually pull up some of these states and the statistics in those states when it comes to these data points uh, and as you go through those data points the big question that i actually want to ask tonight is how do we read this data why is it that some states are seeing a worsening is it that our ske- schemes the government welfare schemes are not working on ground is it that we're not giving these issues more importance or there is some problem with the data exercise or our interpretation that could also be possible which is why we have experts to tell us what's going on on the field and i just want to clarify one thing though this data that's been collated is from 2015 to 2019 imagine if we add 2020 to it a year where we went into a lockdown well all kinds of activity was shut where schools shut down and so midday meals were badly hit where most government welfare schemes did struggle to reach out to people were we actually able to take care of our children then we don't know if it's actually gotten worse this year we'll only find that out later but let me say good evening to the panelists who are joining us and as we progress along we'll give you more and more data and information from this study Dr. Poonima Menon, Senior Research Fellow at the International Food Policy Research. Sujit Ranjan, Executive Director for the Coalition for, for Food and Nutrition Security. Dr. Anjali Huda Sangwan, Director for Live NutriFit and the Center for Obesity and Longevity. Poona Muthreja, Public Health Expert and Executive Director of the Population Foundation of India. Uh, and there are Krishnan Mangal, Dean Research, the Institute of Health Management Research University in Jaipur. Good evening. to everybody and thank you for joining us on this conversation uh let me let me start off with uh, uh, puna mutreja uh, Poon- okay we, i'm just going to go to her in just a bit but first to dr punima menon dr menon um how concerned should we be about what this study reveals we we should be very concerned uh, about what we are seeing here uh it's not just any other study this is the uh sort of flagship national family health survey uh that is done usually just every few years it's a massive exercise uh that gathers data from around the country and this is uh, data from the first phase of of those um the states that they finished uh we i don't believe have seen uh trends such as this in stunting in the previous several rounds of this nationally representative and state rep- representative survey uh and we one normally does not see uh increases in in outcomes such as child stunting when things are reasonably stable you know in stable economies and with stable programs etc 
So, um, you know, so I'm personally, I'm very concerned. Um, and I, I think we need to take quite a hard look to just understand what has been, you know, what has happened in the states where um, one has seen this increase, um, particularly because it is in so many states that, you know, the increase is apparent. Thank you. So, so let's look at, uh, you know, um, a, a parameter by parameter. And I'm looking at data right now for the children with low height, uh, low weight, uh, you know, versus their uh, height. And for states like Maharashtra, it's actually a quarter of our children. In Maharashtra, even in Gujarat, a quarter of our children are underweight for what they're, uh, you know, for what they should be at a certain height. Yeah. Bihar, West Bengal, these are big states, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, uh, and they all have similarly scary statistics. But is there, <coughs> has there been a change in policy uh, that's actually resulted in something like this? Uh, uh, Dr. Anjali Huda, has there been a change in policy or are we unable to implement our schemes properly that could lead to this? Yeah, I think uh, what is very important is for um, the government to see that the midday meals are going through, to see why the, this malnutrition is happening. Could it be because of the um, wrong foods that are being eaten by, uh, you know, that age group? And uh, because kids don't know their nutrition, it's the parents. Are they educated enough to give those kids the right nutrition? Can they afford the good nutrition? Is government giving some affordability? Is giving some subsidy on those kind of foods? So that 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 bracket has to be very strong. Those those norms have to be very strong for those kids to be fed properly. Okay. Um, so one thing that we will have to look at is the midday uh, meals and the way they f function. And, you know, that scares me a little bit as well, because we know for sure that in 2020, uh, that scheme got badly hit when the schools at least initially shut down until a few state governments began to figure out other ways of getting that food to people. Uh, Mr. Sujit Ranjan, to you, <coughs> then that question to your mind, why are we looking at this deterioration rather than seeing an improvement uh, as far as malnutrition or obesity is concerned, why are we going the other direction? Thank you very much. Uh, and um, as a public health professional, uh, first, uh, I'm also uh, taking the other side, like uh, happy to see the substantial improvement in maternal child health indicators uh, over NFHS 4, National Family Health Survey 4. But the, the data from NFHS 5 reveals the importance of nutrition than ever before as the nutrition indicators have not uh, uh, fared well. And uh, what I feel like uh, since uh, a coalition is uh, working with uh, various uh, civil society organizations uh, and based on the learning uh, which I am having and uh, I can say like to effectively carry out the community-based approaches uh, to child care, community mobilization, community engagement is much needed. And this is the time like the nutrition specific because still we are having uh, um, like most of us are having like uh, uh, intermediate causes like the food and the health, rather uh, the sensitive nutrition, sensitive interventions or the underlying causes uh, or the root causes of uh, child malnutrition, whether it's a uh, early marriage, uh, the status of women in the society, the empowerment, I think all those things are very, very close and very important for the nutrition and uh, child and uh, um, maternal nutrition. And uh, this, this data, when you are taking the example of Maharashtra, the Bihar, uh, you can see like uh, uh, all those things are directly indicating some of the things. I, I'm truly speaking, I'm also clueless for some of the data, but uh, what I feel like some of the things uh, I can understand that uh, how the Bihar, the stunting has come down and uh, how the, uh, the Gram Vartha or the sector meetings played a very important role. So the sensitive part is very, very important uh, and uh, because nutrition doesn't mean only the food and the health, rather the uh, engagement of the family, not only the mother, rather the family members, the male engagement is very important. And that is uh, that is already we are having the, uh, the indication like how, where the male engagement or the family in, uh, 
level counseling has improved, the data has also come out uh, well. So the nutrition sensitive areas are very important and mm. the portion of Yarn is taking this. Mm. Maybe we'll, we'll talk a lot about that. Okay, yeah. in fact, in fact, before because you raised this, the Portion Abhiyan, which is one of the schemes that has been started for better nutrition for our children now, they, they, there has been a significant, uh, I mean, uh, you are the experts, you, you, you can add to it, but mm -hmm. my understanding was that we've given a good amount of allocation in the budget, but a closer look at it, uh, in the three years since Portion Abhiyan was started, just about 34% of the total 9,000 odd crores has been used. Is there a problem yeah. uh, there in terms of using the allocated money? So this is um, this is a very important question. And uh, as as uh, you are aware, Poshan Abhiyan was launched uh, in the year 2018. And I personally feel like this is uh, after two years, this data and uh, has come. And uh, like government of India has taken many of uh, uh, the agenda to nutrition in a mission mode. However, across the state, uh, the states, there are few gaps and that has come up in the Niti Aayog report also, like the gaps uh, uh, of the image which needs, uh, which needs immediate attention to across, uh, to strengthen the inputs and the pillars of Poshan Abhyan. Like, for example, the bringing uh, for, I'm just taking few examples. Right. Like the uh, uh, if you see the some of the programming program gaps, uh, like in human resource, particularly in the supervisory level, the procurement of growth monitoring devices and the smartphone are uh, and uh, uh, likelihood of uh, attrition of the quality of data collected through ICDS CAS system, the fund utilization, the convergence at grassroots level, and the capacity building. So these are the areas uh, which needs immediate attention and that has already been identified by Niti Aayog. And uh, I feel this is a um, baseline for Poshan Abhiyan because it's a two years, uh, a thousand days just we have celebrated of uh, Poshan Abhiyan on 2nd of uh, December. Hmm. So this is a baseline for the uh, of the Poshan Abhiyan, how we are taking it forward. Okay, uh, I, I'll come back to you for a little bit more on that. But uh, uh, let me just also look at some of the schemes that the government has, because at the end of the day, if there is a problem here that this data suggests, these are the schemes that the government will have to look mm -hmm. into to try and fix them. So there is the Anganwari Services Scheme, which caters to nutrition, health and pre-education of children till age of six. Then there's the Poshan Abhyan that we were just talking about, again, for children, uh, pregnant mothers, uh, pregnant women and lactating mothers. Then there is the Rajiv Gandhi, the National Crash Scheme, uh, which is actually the daycare facility for the daily wage workers. And then there you will have to take care of what the children are eating. The Pradhan Mantri, uh, Matru Vandana Yojana a Scheme for Pregnant Women and Lactating Mothers. And of course, the Midday Meal Scheme, which has uh, you know, been around for a while, which is about nutritional support to children. And also an incentive for, the, for, for, for the people to send their children to schools. Now... Is this where we uh, we are not able to still address the aspect of nutrition? Uh, Daya Krishnan Mangal, the question to you, if we had to fix this trend that we are looking at, would we begin with these schemes? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to uh, begin from where you started this uh, discussion and this debate. But we need to look at this data carefully and understand that whether this observed difference or variation from NFHS4, uh, what does it tell us? Uh, first of all, I would, as a public health professional and epidemiologist, I would like to ensure that this observed difference is real difference. And this fact sheet data that we have is an average uh, proportion or percentage data. We need to look at the confidence intervals of this information. And, and with that, we will be able to appreciate whether this observed variation is a real uh, variation. Now, with this, it, even if this is a real variation, then we need to look at what has happened to all these five uh, indicators that we use for understanding the malnutrition among children under five. And uh, I have uh, quickly tabulated this data since I, we got this report, NFHS report. And I find, I left the union territories and the small states, but it looked at, at the large states, and I find that the, the decline is not uniform. Uh, 
uh, except the obesity. Obesity, almost every state, um, we find that uh, the proportion of the children uh, who are overweight have increased. But I think uh, the concern is Assam, Himachal Pradesh, Maharashtra, West Bengal, and Telangana, where I see that more than one, uh, two, three indicators, we find that uh, the this data has deteriorated compared to the NFHS 4. And there we need to look at uh, very, very carefully that what has happened in these states. The other, uh, other very important point I would like to uh, state here is that this data is basically prevalence data. And prevalence, as we all know, is a function of the incident cases plus all those prevalent cases at that point of time or that period of time. Now, not necessarily that increased prevalence indicates that things have deteriorated. It is also possible that uh, this uh, increase in prevalence is because of the better survival of those children who have suffered from malnutrition in the last five years or three years. And maybe the incident has gone down. So I think we need to wait till we get the detailed information or the uh, detailed reports on these indicators. With these two uh, caveats, I would like to now come to your question that what could have happened hmm. if you take this data on its face value and, and, and believe that there is a deterioration on, on these indicators in these states. Now, uh, as a public health person, uh, as you mentioned, there, there are several schemes of the government to address the undernutrition uh, in children. Uh, uh, both at the uh, central level and at the state level. Now, one thing uh, that comes to my mind is that how effectively these schemes have been implemented. So what had been the impact of these schemes on the access of uh, the supplementary nutrition programs, availability of these programs? The most important thing is utilization. What proportion of uh, these services were utilized by those who uh, needed the services the most. Then comes the issue of uh, monitoring these uh, implementation of these schemes carefully in terms of what was the coverage of eligible children and what was the effective coverage. And effective coverage in, in real terms will tell us that what is the outcome of those uh, programs, whether okay. it is Abhyan or any other Abhyan. So uh, I would uh, uh, still suggest or say that perhaps uh, during these uh, five years between NFHS 4 and NFHS 5, mm. more could have been done to address the uh, malnutrition status. Because in, in India, mal malnutrition levels are already high. They have been high since several decades. Right. Even compared to the uh, sub-Saharan countries, our, we have been reporting higher prevalences of malnutrition. But we expected that during these five years, when we have focused program at, um, programs for addressing this issue, we were expecting decline. But uh, the, 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 that, that's, the, the, that's the interesting part. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and so we're looking at now various reasons why that could have happened. Poona Muthreja, um, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, one aspect could be not getting giving the right kind of food maybe somewhere our nutrition plan itself isn't working the other could be the, the coverage which is uh, addressing or including the number of children that's somewhere gone weak we've, we've deviated from our plan or are not able to really focus right what is going on here to your mind see first let's remember <coughs> that 20 percent of the kids are born undernourished they are at a disadvantage and why does that happen we have to analyze our girls are getting more anemic uh, there is more anemia than we uh, in the nfhs5 results and anemic mothers give birth to anemic underweight babies and that cycle continues so we haven't dealt with um, 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 anemia and there is an increase in anemia. Second, you know, we don't reach the worse off. We In any of our programs, we reach the better off, but that we don't reach the worse off. We need to absolutely start with the most um, poorest, 
um, uh, communities and the most disadvantaged, hard to reach. We have to targeting. There's something wrong with our targeting. Second, I'd like to say that we are, you know, let me take the midday meal scheme and lactation of mothers. They need proteins. They don't need that wretched, just uh, carbohydrates. They need proteins. We've taken eggs away from most of the states because of political, religious reasons. Mm. Finally, we have also, um, we, we, how much, where have you seen messaging except breastfeeding? Do we give messages that the children between zero and five, if they are not fed between zero and 18 properly, they are never, they, they, they're never going to be able to catch up. And after the baby is six months, the child is six months, we need to give supplementary food. What supplementary food? How much? How many intervals? Mothers are not able to feed babies every three hours, which they should be, which the babies need. So we have, I think we have to also do communication. We have to do literacy on nutrition. We've got to change behaviors. And where have you seen anything happening there? And look at the food they are fed in the primary health, uh, in the, in the, sorry, in the uh, health, uh, uh, in ICDS. Look at, you know, when a journalist reports that all they're getting is a chapati and salt in Bihar, they're put, not Bihar, UP, they're put in jail. We can't even report on the poor quality of food. You need community participation. You need community engagement. And we finally, you know, look at the in food inflation. I think food inflation calls for PDS to be greatly strengthened with protein and other food items. We need, we need, Absolute. We are in a crisis. This data tells us that we need to create social security mechanisms for the poorest. We need cash transfers. We need uh, our PDS to have more than just wheat and um, wheat. Uh, wheat. Finally, look at the inc uh, uh, the fact that uh, female work participation rates have uh, come down by a huge number, not just COVID, even before COVID. And look at the economy. It's not just post-COVID. The economy had begun to tank. Uh, finally, I don't know. I think we need to look at what was the impact of uh, note bandi, yeah. demonetization. What kind of impact did it have on people's jobs and people's ability to... their <coughs> purchasing power. Okay, you know, that's a very uh, interesting uh, uh, set of points that you've raised because it gives a different dimension to this conversation. Uh, Dr. Anjali Huda, uh, essentially what we're saying is it's not just about effectiveness of the existing schemes, but also the environment itself, the economic environment itself may have deteriorated, adding to the problems for people in terms of uh, whether it was the expecting mothers, or uh, lactating mothers or little children. Would you agree? Yes, I also um, would like to add that, you know, I agree with Poonamji on all the points. A uh, very important factor where we are doing the midday meals and, uh, you know, educating the parents on nutrition and basically monitoring that midday meal and having a parameter to, you know, monitor the kids from when they start getting that uh, meal or when they are starting to go to a government scheme you know you you told me so many government schemes right now i wasn't even aware of that but i don't think even the general public is aware of that but now that you are you're on national tv you're telling everything that there's so many schemes available but are these schemes having a monitoring uh, parameter are they seeing those kids are being uh, fed and what are the changes in their anthrop uh, uh, anthropometrics you know, what are the measurements? Are they gaining height? Are they gaining weight? Uh, I don't know if the measurement is being done. So that is a very important part of measurement. And then talking about, you know, um, we have been talking on malnutrition, but we are also talking about this obese population, which, um, you know, I think you will intend to discuss later. But uh, since I have a chance to speak, I'm going to talk about that. Yes. This obese population is also very malnourished. Yes. This obese population is not nourished at all. I mean, uh, it's not about the BMI. It's really about how um, the system is lacking nutrients. And 
I don't know that obesity is mostly obviously in the little bit urban states, but uh, obesity is a concern because we have two pendulums here, two spectrums of ob- uh, nutrition in India, which is the uniqueness of this country that we have malnutrition one side and obesity one side. So I'm dealing with the obesity part, I see these people are all the time. So there is something wrong with our food, something education, something wrong uh, with the way uh, we are being taught nutrition. Even at, you know, medical school, we are not taught nutrition at all. So that is something that we have to be doing. No, so you know, uh, we, we we got a, uh, lost the audio with you a bit there. It was a little patchy, but I was going to ask you about that because uh, th- there are there are a lot of concerns about oh, how is it that we're all seeing a increase in malnutrition? We're also seeing an increase in obesity. Is this obesity restricted in some way to the urban areas, or is is it also in rural areas? But essentially, uh, and Dr. Anjali, let me uh, you know ask you this question before I take it to other panelists. Essentially, it's about about bad food isn't it isn't to say oh too much food it's still bad food right yes definitely there is so much fast food there is so much empty calories that people are eating and especially the kids if you go to a good public uh, a, a good school like a private school and go see their cafeterias you will be shocked i mean it is supposed to come on the news the kind of food they are serving they are serving completely nutrition less food they are like punam ji said there is no protein in that food we have taken away all the eggs we have taken away uh, the you know the religious uh, things have come into play for no reason because egg is a single most sasta sundar tikau protein and we have taken that out of the lives of the people and especially you know that uh, the uh, young uh, mid day people the mid day uh, meal wale bacche they need that kind of nutrition we are not giving them ek chana ki roti ya simple aap uh, wheat ki roti ya chawal se uska pet bhar doge but you will never get the nutrition uh, into that uh, uh, you know kids uh, body and then of course obese obese i deal with lot of urban obese uh, uh, kids you know and i'm telling you i have seen so much obesity and everybody when i do their markers of nutrition they are very low hmm. they are low in their low in hemoglobin they are very they low in most of their uh, nutrients like you know the vitamins and the minerals hmm. so we are seeing but we are seeing malnourished obesity here okay uh, punam mutraja wanted to make a point go go, go ahead please Uh, can I no, come and ask Tanvi? Yes, I'm coming to Dr. Menon in just said, a bit. Uh, Poonima first. Uh, uh, Mr. Poonima yeah, uh, Mutraja adding, first. I, yeah. Adding to what um, uh, Anjali said, I eat, you know, if you go to a village today, yeah, you find chips everywhere. Chips of reach. You find bread walas coming ghanti baja ke. There is something terribly wrong with. you know in limited resources people manage you know the coarse grains and whatever else they ate then as i said earlier the the cost of food items especially vegetables meats um have really gone up it has nothing to do with inflation levels look at the cost potatoes are 60 rupees and i'm not recommending potatoes but most vegetables are 50 and 60 rupees a kilo in cities but even in the villages um why can't we have what the ngos are doing post covid with the migrants who have gone back there is land we can encourage a different eating pattern it's not just in delhi schools i get stunned at to see kids with chips packets and all kinds of rubbish even in small towns in rural areas and finally we we just a lifestyle you, uh, you know and not only lack of exercise but the kind of food young people are eating today and i can bet you if you look at the age um it will be the younger people who are more obese than uh, 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 you know than the uh, older generation because they still are eating some grains that are different and finally you know we really need to do a massive campaign on junk food in india and nutrition nu- nutrition is an issue uh, both not only government and the schemes have let us down but people are letting themselves down in what they are having and what they are not having okay have you seen any programs of behavior change no 
Yeah. You know, so since we, we know that malnutrition is almost becoming stubborn in India, we really need, we need a prime minister doing um, a monkey bath on, on, on nutrition um, and just having schemes without accountability of the people and good quality food with proteins is not going to solve the problem without that. Okay, okay, point well taken. Uh, uh, Dr. Punima Menon, you wanted to come in. Uh, and, and I also want you to, uh, uh, you know, give us your view on the uh, other aspect that came about, that it's not just perhaps about bad implementation of the schemes. It could also be that your economic environment has deteriorated in the last couple of years, and maybe that's adding to this problem. Yeah, uh, thank, thanks so much, Tanvi. So, uh, you know, I, I think what, what you see when you see particularly a stunted child is that there's been a confluence of factors that have come together to affect what is happening to that child's growth over, you know, the first two to three years of their life. So you kind of have to go back from, okay, we did this survey in 2019. So these kids were born between 2014 and 2019. What are all the things that could have gone wrong, uh, you know, in that, in that time period, whether it be, uh, you know, and, and one of the things we do know that there have been challenges around is, is the economic story. Um, you know, I, I'm like, I, I want to be a little bit uh, cautious, you know, like um, uh, uh, the professor from Jaipur was saying, we do need to look at the data very carefully. We need to look at it by geography and we need to look at it with the frameworks uh, that we have that help us understand malnutrition. Um, we also, uh, you know, I personally, I'm not interested in using this data to look at the impact of, you know, the, the nutrition mission that is on there right now, mm. because this avatar of the nutrition mission, uh, which does include actually quite a lot of work on behavior change and lots had been happening in the field before, um, you know, the pandemic came in. But that started in, in 2018 and probably really only got going on the ground in many, many different states and sort of full, full force in the uh, you know, mid to late 2018. But so really for me, the, the 2014 to 2018 period is a very important period for us to be analyzing things around the economy, around food prices. Um, but remember, even if food prices don't increase, if people have less money, then the cost of the nutritious diet for that family changes dramatically. And we have research from my colleagues at IFPRI that basically shows that, you know, close to 75% of the populations that they studied can't afford a nutritious diet. They can afford a basic diet, but not a nutritious diet. So I think we have to go back to, you know, sort of back to basics on what is it that enables good nutrition. Okay. Understand that it looks very different in different parts of the country. There is not going to be a single scheme that solves this. There's not going to be a single action. What you need is sort of very strategic diagnostic. And we need all the schemes. We need all the actions to reach families of young people. The other thing I want to say is this. Uh, many of us on this, on this show are, are parents. You know, think about what, how hard it is to look after a child in the early years of life and how much support uh, and, and a sort of privilege those of us who brought up our children with, you know, the wherewithal of sort of uh, decent bank accounts and decent jobs and decent housing, and it's still a tough job, all right? Mm -hmm. So we can never forget that a child does not grow up by themselves. They grow up in families, and what you need is sort of a whole scale support of vulnerable families. You need to really bring together everything that is going to make life better for the parents of the child, mm -hmm. because you know what? The parents will take care of their kids. What you have right now is, you know, you probably have a lot of economically and, you know, Correct. sort of families that have been stressed in many different ways, um, whether it's prices, whether it's their own economy, whether it is schemes not reaching them. And, and I think, you know, we have to take that perspective. We have to figure out how you're going to support the families of young children with everything. We can't go in there and feed every child in this, in this country. You know, the government cannot do that. You have to support the families. Okay. And the children will thrive if you do that. 
<laughs> okay, uh, uh, that's an interesting point that you've made in terms of approaching this problem and fixing this problem. Uh, I just also want to say that, you know, a couple of these schemes that we're talking about, for example, uh -huh. uh, in March 2018, the government launched the Anemia uh, Mukt Bharat, Bharat, which is correct, an intensified correct, iron correct. plus initiative. Yes. Now, it's just been launched in 2018, so we'll probably see the eff effect and impact or benefits of that only a couple of years down yes. the line. Yeah, Similarly, correct. Mr. Sujit Ranjan, the, the, the other one that we were speaking about, the portion of Bihar is also relatively new. Uh, so do you expect that, you know, uh, impact of some of these newer schemes will only come in a few more days uh, and we just need to continue with better communication and better implementation? Yeah, uh, I think um, this is a very important point uh, you have mentioned and Poshan Abhyan, uh, the primarily how to uh, bring the convergence of uh, all the stakeholders, that is uh, the primary focus and the Jan Jan Bhagidari, Jan Andolan are very, very important. So here, what I'm trying to say, like, uh, I'm taking the point from Dr. Purnima Menon, like, uh, the, the how we are building the capacity of the frontline workers, how the civil society organizations, including self-help groups, uh, can play a very active role in supporting solution at local level, such as promotion of nutrition uh, education at uh, individual family level, generate self-reliant population support capacity building efforts, and the nutrition security at community level. At the same time, the technology innovation that is part of the Poshan Abhyan and uh, techni uh, uh, this uh, technical innovations, the data collection, the monitoring mechanism, I think we have to go a long way. And uh, the role of uh, Panchayati Raj institution here, it's uh, very important and can facilitate availability, accessibility, as well as the counseling for the proper utilization of services. The services, whether it's a supplemented nutrition by the ICDS or midday meal by the school, how the services are being utilized by the family or community in a, in a desired manner and build awareness at the locally available food because there are some biasness how the that's why the ro role of civil society organization is very important here and uh, poshan abhyan is uh, trying to bring all of them together and promotion of appropriate uh, dietary habits and also one more thing i would like to say the private sectors plays a very very significant role uh, in the social development and this is the right time to explore uh, uh, the engagement of private sector Mm. Um, and they are the opportunity for creating a sustainable public health ecosystem. Okay. Um, um, uh, Mr. Daya Krishnan Mangal wanted to come in. Go ahead, please. Yeah. So I just wanted to add a couple of other aspects of this whole issue of malnutrition. Yes. Which involves uh, protein energy malnutrition, micronutrient uh, malnutrition, and obesity. Yeah. I wanted to say that primarily the foundation of nutritional status of any child starts in the womb. Or even before that, you know, about 15 to 20 percent women in India are malnourished. And then these women conceive and they do not get um, adequate diet during their pregnancy. And then they uh, deliver ch a child which is um, underweight or premature. And then uh, another very important programmatic side is Despite our best efforts of maternal and child health care for several decades, you know, the indicators, the infant feeding practices haven't changed. So our antenatal care has improved. Our deliveries are uh, in the institutions have improved. But if you look at the data of early initiation of breastfeeding in one hour, it is still ranging around 40 to 50 percent. You know, I fail to understand when 80 to 90 percent births are taking place in the institutions, why all children are not getting early initiation of breastfeeding. Same is the problem of uh, exclusive breastfeeding. Despite so many efforts and so many decades, uh, our data shows that exclusive breastfeeding ranges between 50 to 70 percent, even best of the states. Now, th these are some of the and then uh, waning and continuation of the breastfeeding, you know, these are important things. But comes uh, the other very important aspect is the role, uh, um, the other uh, uh, services I would uh, like to highlight. Mm. You know, nothing has changed or very little change has occurred in the spacing of uh, births. Still, 
sizable number of busts take place within uh, two or three years' time. You know, that has a bearing on the nutritional status of the subsequent children. You know, th these are some of the important things. Then comes the role of the family herself, uh, the itself. You know, what choices they make with whatever resources, socioeconomic status and the availability of the food items that they have, that those practices needs to change. And we need to look at what and how we are facilitating these families or these young mothers during the period when they are with us for almost six months or more uh, in the antenatal period. What advices uh, as a medical system we are giving them. Then same thing is true for what we are doing during when the child is with us in ICDS program from say one year onwards to five years. Okay. So these are some of the important issues that we need to look into before we can expect that the overall problem of malnutrition will uh, improve in India and uh, the d different components, acute and chronic malnutrition, micronutrient malnutrition and obesity. I will be addressed adequately. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I agree with you on that, though. I do hope that at least this study and this data is used by the governments to take uh, you know, uh, appropriate measures to fix uh, the, the concerning trends, because it is a concerning trend. If we say that between 2015 and 2019, the situation has deteriorated rather than improving more malnutrition and more obesity, uh, then that's obviously a concern. I'm come out of time, but uh, co uh, final comments from Puna Mutreja. Go ahead, please. You know, you're so he, he the the professor from ITMR is so right. It's not just one scheme or a Correct. bunch of schemes for feeding <clears throat> the poor or the undernourished that are going to solve the problem. Young, we have to have greater value of women. We need to we we, we need to invest in our adolescents and of course earlier too, so that they are not malnourished, but they don't marry early. They don't have children early. There is spacing in a country where 77% of the women who go through sterilization, which is 50% of them, they go through a family planning method for the first time in their life. 77% have never experienced any spacing methods and we invest so little. We invest a very meager <coughs> sum in spacing. We, so it has to be a woman has to look at, be looked at holistically. And it's not just job participation and other, but a woman, uh, as, as Purnima said, you know, we have to care what is the what are the circumstances a young woman who's going to the field who is cleaning the house looking after children going to fetch fuel fodder where is she going to have the even mental resources and emotional resources apart from have the milk to feed the baby to do exclusive breastfeeding so i really think we need to invest more in, you know, we need to look at women differently. Women eat the least and the last, and women should be eating the first and the maximum. We just need to completely uh, use this, however awful the data is on nutrition and disappointing and tragic. We need to rethink, you know, we need to take a huge turn and uh, look at how we are going to fix this and how we are going to invest in women in the process. Oh, After I completely all, agree with you. <clears throat> and I think that's a great note to, you know, wrap this up because, yes, we need to. We need to see how we fix this basis, that data, get together. The government needs to bring on the experts. Uh, and, and let's not forget, as I thank all of our panelists and experts for joining us, and we'll have more conversations, you know, uh, in a few weeks as well. But let's not forget that this year would have made the uh, uh, situation worse. At least 15 states saw disruption uh, in various of these schemes, uh, especially the midday meal scheme, because of the pandemic. 15 states struggled in a big manner with the midday meal schemes because of the pandemic. Now, how will you compensate for that loss of nutrition in that period? Or even for the fact that many of these children will have to be literally again pulled back to the schools. Uh, you know, they would have dropped out. The parents would have struggled at an economic, uh, on an economic level this year. So we will have to go on even more aggressively if we have to 
solve this problem, fix this problem right away. We can't wait for another round of NFHS uh, survey to be done five years from now to find out, oh, the matter may have actually just worsened. Save the Children Foundation's concurrent assessment across 15 states found that around 40% of the eligible children did not receive their midday meals during the lockdown. Imagine that. And these states include some of the big ones, small ones across the country. It's a problem irrespective of who is in power. So yes, while there are some silver linings in the study, for example, the vaccination program seems to be doing well. There's been a jump in the vaccination program uh, that we have witnessed. Uh, the, the stunting problem, the mal malnutrition and obesity still continues to be a big, big concern as per this survey. This is a red flag that a government and state and central, all kinds of governments cannot ignore. Thank you so much for joining us on this conversation.